They said to Jesus, reply, we do not know. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We do not know. La noche es oscura. En una noche es oscura. Con ansias en amor. En amores inflamada. Oh, dichosa ventura. Salí sin ser notada. Estando y en mi casa sosegada. Who uh, knows Spanish, please translate that for me. <laughs> in the dark night, with longing fired in love, a oh, happy fate, a happy fate, I went and noticed while my house was calm. Now, this is not a really good translation yet. <laughs> At least we have this uh, poetry from. Uh, poem from John, John of the Cross. You know, if you know him, you just love him. You know, John of the Cross. And uh, for John of the Cross, God is darkness. Faith is darkness. Faith is blind. That's what God and faith is like for him. And he knows, nobody can know God, really. The moment you say you know God, then you really do not know God for him. And his whole spirituality is about nothingness. It's all about nada. Nada te do You know, if you think about the word na uh, nada or nothing, it is a very interesting reality. Because you, you use this word here, in this sentence here. Nothing is useless. It has so many, many meanings. Nothing realistically, practically is useless. But nothing is useless. Mm -hmm. And his whole spirituality is about nothing. <laughs> we don't know. And we're entering into this, this, uh, this kind of uh, reading of the, uh, the gospel. This, this is called mystical. It's not uh, practical, but mystical. It's not uh, um, literal. It's not metaphorical or allegorical or moral. It's mystical. And when you talk about mystical uh, reading of the gospel, you always talk about nothing. And what about this nothing? If we come back to what we are, and then who God is. What we are is nothing. And I have said this before, but perhaps it may escape some of our, you know, our mind. Okay, I am nothing. You are nothing. We are nothing. We are no. Thing, we are no things. A lot of people, you know, get offended because I say you are nothing. Try to say that to your husband, your wife. You are nothing. <laughs> You're nothing. It's like you know, this is this is insulting. No, we truly, by nature, we are nothing. You look at the reality. Eighty percent, seventy percent, at least, uh, of our body is made up of water, and the other one, if you you see people. And do cremation <laughs> after they die, right? Like, and uh, just uh, the, the the amount of ashes you can hold in your hand like this. I don't know how many ounces. And then if you look at the water, if you analyze the water in there, you know the H two O. So you have one uh, one uh, one uh, atom of uh, of uh, oxygen and two atom of uh, hydrogen. But you look at the atoms. The majority of the atoms, you know, especially you know, uh, ha um, hydrogen, oh, just nothing, empty space. Really, in reality, we are nothing. And God created us out of nothing. And this is the foundation of St. John's uh, mysticism or spirituality. And once you can acknowledge we are nothing, we can do this, we'll be okay. I have no problem. People can insult me, okay, but I'm nothing. <laughs> yeah. And you get rid of a lot of things. Now, this is, this is kenosis here. This is kenosis uh, from, from St. Paul, which is, you know, God emptied himself to become like nothing. So he can be someone to us and make us someone. We are nothing, but we are somebody. And we just keep identifying ourselves with something. 
but we forget we are already someone. And this is the whole, the whole spirituality of John the Cross. Now this mysticism, and it helps you so much when you look at the world and you can look at your life and, you know, God is and I'm not. This kind of spirituality is really Catholic Christian spirituality. It takes an honest person, honest man and woman to, to see this. And these people, the elders and chief priests, they came to Jesus and, you know, they were honest. They wanted to ask him because they were afraid. They, of, they were afraid that they, they you know, Jesus would took, uh, take over their authority. That's why they came and they challenged Jesus. By what authority are you doing these things? Doing these things. And who gave you the authority? They were afraid. They, they feared Jesus. Because they identified themselves with something. Uh, some position. Some kind of power or authority. They challenged, challenged Jesus ask him, by asking him this question. And then Jesus challenged them back. You know, Jesus is, is in uh, the ultimate intelligence. He, he challenged them back. Oh, I will give you an answer. I promise I will give you an answer. But I ask you a question and answer my, my question first, and then I will answer you. <coughs> by whose authority? Oh, the baptism of John. Where does it come from? This is not a, a, you know, a, trick, a tricky question, really. It's not a tricky question. John the Baptist told everybody, and everybody know, you know, his baptism, it is about repentance, and repentance is about the prophetic tradition, always repentance, and everybody knows. These people, oh, they were honest, but in fact, this honesty is kind of a lie because of the fear, okay? If they say, okay, John came from God, and why didn't they believe in God? If he say, John did not come from God, <coughs> then the people, they will be in trouble with the people. So they say, I don't know. We don't know. Uh, really. They don't know how to respond to the question of Jesus. But they, really, they do know. If they are honest in that way, but they are lying because they know that John comes from God because John keeps telling, telling people and hope uh, the crowd, the people, knew. Now, you return to Jesus, and once again he said, I will not tell you, because you're not telling me, so I'm not going to tell you from what, what authority. But now returning to ourselves, to, to you, to us here, you know, by what authority that Jesus came to us? By what authority? You know authority. <coughs> by what authority? Who gave the authority to Jesus? Exactly. No. He is his own authority. By whom? Yeah, of course, the Father. But uh, this is what's going on here. Well, he is the eternal Logos. He is the eternal Word. He has, he created the whole universe. And in fact, he gave up authority. He gave up authority. He gave up power to become, to become a human being like us. Now, everything he did, he depended on the Father, the will of the Father, and the power of the Holy Spirit. He became nothing. He emptied himself to become like nothing and a slave. Now, he is authority itself. He has no authority at all. He has no authority, but he is authority. And the authority of nothingness. Hmm. You look around, you, you study uh, the Catholic spirituality, and you see... The usefulness of your uselessness of nothingness. You see this? Please look at your hand here. Look at your open your hand. Okay. Now close it. Both hands close it. Like a make a fist like this. Okay. Now when I feel I feel itchy. Okay. What do I do? How do I scratch? It's supposed on my head. How do you scratch my head like this? What about doing the sign of a cross like this in the name of the Father? So can you do that? Can you cook? Can you clean? Can you do anything with a fish like this? And you go outside on the street and people look at you with this fish like this. They think you, you know, you're about to punch them. <laughs> because we have no emptiness. No nothing here. Now you open, you see, empty space. You can use it. The uselessness of empty space because empty space or nothingness gives you space, room to be. 
and time to live or to grow. This is the spirituality of St. John of the Cross. And look at the dark night. And why, uh, when did he, uh, he, he write this, this poem, La, La, La Noche Oscura? <coughs> well, that, what happened was that um, well, he did what Jesus did. He and St. Uh, Teresa Avila uh, kind of a renovate or refound the Carmelite. Okay? And St. Teresa was older uh, than him, 25 years old, uh, 25 years older. And uh, his brothers, like I'm a redemptorist, and uh, we come from the tradition of the Carmelite because Saint Alphonsus loves Saint Teresa. And uh, his brothers, his country is the religious, the priest. When they heard that, he wanted to renew and you know, you know, you know, refound uh, the Carmelite um, order. So they captured him. <coughs> they were rich people. They captured him and they imprisoned him. They put him in prison for eight years. Really. They put him in prison, and every day, and every every day, every night, they come and they, you know, they beat him. Really, they tortured him. Really, imagine priest torturing priest because they, they say that he he was a her heretic. They beat him. Everybody in the house, you know, all the priests come and just spit at him and you know, torture him. So in this dungeon, he wrote this poem. He couldn't see anything, just darkness and darkness, and he found this spirituality, and nada, nothing. But, and then, well, you know, Jesus appeared to him and asked him, John Juan, um, now uh, you are carrying the cross, what, what do you want me to do for you now? You know what John the cross said? Oh Lord, give me more cross. That's what he said. Amazing man. But and then he found a way to escape from the prison. <laughs> really, he did, and he managed to escape. You know, he, he you know he escaped the, the prison, and then the first thing he did was he went to the nuns, okay, the, the convent, and the nuns put him uh, to put him in the hospital bed as as one of the the, uh, the patients, and the soldiers came because his brothers Carmelites had a lot of authority in Spain, and they went after it again, went to Saint uh, uh, Teresa and asked. Have you seen John? And uh, Saint Teresa said this. Well, it would be a miracle if I see John. That's what he said, she said. It would be a miracle. She saw him. And I said, it would be a miracle. And it would be, I, I said, well, he's in the house. And the first thing John did was he gathered all the nuns together. And you no, know, he was so hungry, he was so sick. But the first thing he did was to celebrate mass, and he re read this poem. To the nuns. And because he understood that he was nothing, God is everything for him. Now I share with you a little about this spirituality, this tremendous, the profound spirituality, the Catholic spirituality of St. John, a little bit of mysticism. And you come to this mystery of nothingness, and you come to, you move to that altar of the mystery of the Eucharist. He became nothing, isn't it? He became nothing. And when you consume him, once again, he becomes nothing. He creates space and eternity for us to be. Eternity for us to live and to grow. Let us come and adore him.